Is OPEC planning an October surprise? Could be a big news thing. Could happen tomorrow or the next day. Anyway, joining us now, Senator John Hoven of North Dakota. Senator Hoven, sir, welcome back. Well, I don't know. Maybe you know something. You're on the Energy Committee. Is OPEC going to slash production and uh, drive up prices in their own October surprise? What are you hearing, sir? Larry, it looks like they might do just that. Uh, what we were hearing starting yesterday is that at their meeting uh, Wednesday that they're going to discuss uh, possibly reducing production by a million barrels a day. And this is OPEC, OPEC plus, so that includes Russia, of course. And uh, the estimate is that could add about $10 a barrel mm. to the price of crude. And of course, that means higher prices at the pump for consumers. What, what is the, uh, just in oil terms, what is the motive? Why would the Saudis do that? Because, Senator, just let me just think. Um, oil prices have come down. Um, a lot of it has to do with the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. A lot of it has to do with Russian production probably staying higher because China and India is buying it. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of factors out there. But why would the Saudis want higher prices? Why would the Saudis want to help finance uh, Vladimir Putin, for example? You know, uh, Larry, it really is an interesting question. You know, we've been, or the Biden administration has been taking a million barrels a day out of the Strategic Petroleum Oil Reserve. And it's down about half of its capacity. So, you know, it can hold more than 750 million barrels. It's down about 350 million barrels and going down. And they know at some point that's going to have to reverse. We're producing about a million less than we did at the end of the Trump administration. So they see what's going on here. And so this is a really interesting move. I, and to me, it looks like an effort to really demonstrate their market power. Yeah, that's right. We've gone, USA has gone from energy independence or dominance. Now we depend on these damn OPEC meetings again, just like in the old days when it was just so pathetic. You know, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, you are right, sir. Um, we've knocked off almost half taken out half of that. And it's interesting, if the Saudis cut production, among other consequences, all prices will be higher. So if the Bidens think they can come back and refill Spro with cheap oil prices, they're not going to be able to do it. Exactly. Look, the only thing that this administration should be doing is taking the handcuffs off our energy producers. If we go back to work, we can increase our supply by much more than a million barrels a day. And that just means allowing our producers to do what they do best with the best environmental stewardship. And that will have an impact right away because it's not only about producing more supply, it's about signaling to the markets that more supply is coming. That starts to reverse exactly what OPEC is doing, and that's what we need to do. Yeah, we should be in the driver's seat. I don't know what the exact right numbers are, Senator, but last I saw, we were still producing about 11 and a half million barrels per day. Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID, we were close to 13 million barrels per day. That's a big gap. Also, sir, as you recall, the energy departments, uh, whatever the think tank is, the statistical think tank, you know, they were predicting 14 million barrels a day here in 2022. So in a sense, you know, we're like 3 million barrels a day short, which if we're on the market, prices would be down to $50 a barrel, some such. Gasoline at the pump would be closer to $2 a barrel. And we wouldn't care about these dumb OPEC meetings, right? I mean, we didn't care for several years. It was wonderful not to care. Now we have to care. It, look, you're exactly right, Larry, but you've got an administration that has stopped oil production on federal lands, both offshore and onshore. And for the little bit that they're supposedly allowing, they've raised royalty uh, rates and taxes so it costs more. In addition, they won't let us build the pipelines and so forth, the LNG facilities. Uh, so they're doing all these things that, again, are putting the handcuffs on our energy producers. So that's why production is down. And your numbers were right there. Again, take those handcuffs off, we could increase the actual supply. And think about this. The administration at some point is going to have to reverse taking a million barrels a day out of the Strategic right. Petroleum Reserve and start buying it back and putting it in. Now, if you're OPEC, think about what you're doing. You're now, I mean, it's like jujitsu. They're going to make the administration buy it back at a higher price. Yes, sir. So, again, we've got to change our energy policy we need to keep pushing for that, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Ironically, I mean, I, I look, I, um, I don't say this with crocodile tears, but the fact is, if the Saudis cut production, 
and oil and gasoline prices go up, the people that are going to get hurt the most are the Democrats at the polls once again. But in a sense, they're hoisted on their own petard, Senator Hovind. You know, I don't have any sympathy, not, not, not only because I want the cavalry to win, but the fact is it's their crazy global warming, turn the fossil spigots off, that put us in this position in the first place. If you ask me, they're getting what they deserve. I'll give you the last word. <laughs> Think about it. The president went to Saudi Arabia. Mohammed bin, uh, bin uh, uh, Salman, MBS, asked for more production, didn't get it. Now they're producing less. I mean, and, and then he talks about buying oil from Venezuela or, and other places that are our adversaries. Hey, the solution is simple. And who has the best environmental stewardship in the world? We do. This is common sense stuff. Let's produce more energy here at home. Let's get the right energy policy in place so we can do it. Yes, sir. Senator John Hovind of North Dakota, thank you, sir. Great to see you again.